Okay, so we're going to be looking at chapter two from Pure Year One, which is on quadratics. And I would start off by saying not to get too complacent with GCSE because there's definitely a step up, step up with A-level. So we're going to be looking at solving quadratic equations. So we're going to be revisiting completing the square. We're going to do some idea about function notations, sketching graphs, looking at the discriminant, and also some things with modeling as well. So we're going to get started straight away. OK, first of all, solving quadratic equations. Um, so I've got a quadratic equation here. We can tell it's a quadratic because the highest power that we have here is the squared, which means it is an equation of degree two, because that's the highest power that we have. And it says that there are three ways of solving a quadratic equation. What are they? So if you have a think to yourself, what the three ways you could solve a quadratic equation? Well, the first way that you could solve a quadratic equation is by factorizing. In order to be able to factorize a quadratic equation, the best thing to do is always to make sure that everything is equal to zero, first of all. So we have x squared plus 5x equals 6. So I'm going to subtract the 6. So I have x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals 0. And then factorizing, I know you know how to do this from GCSE. You think of two numbers that multiply to give minus 6, but they add to give 5. So that is going to be uh, x plus 6 and x minus 1 for our two solutions that we've got here. And I wonder if you know actually why we actually then go to this next stage and just say that x is 1 or that x is equal to minus 6. Well, it's to do with this line that we've got here. The whole point of something being equal to 0 and then split into these two things that we've got here is we're actually saying I have got some number being multiplied by some other number and the answer that I get is 0. So by looking at this, if you think of two numbers and the answer is zero, one of those two numbers that you multiplied must be zero. So it either must be zero multiplied by something or it must be something multiplied by zero, which tells me that either the first bracket is equal to zero. In other words, x plus six is equal to zero. Solving that equation, you get that x is minus six. Or the second bracket is equal to zero, so x is equal to one. And that's why we've got this solution here and this solution here. Sometimes people just have learned that you do the opposite for these bits of the solutions, but it's because these two things multiplying to zero, one of these must be equal to zero. So the second way that you might solve this quadratic equation is by using the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula, you should already know, you won't get this in a formula book, so it's important that you do know this. So the formula is that x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And the quadratic formula does need to be in the rearranged form that we've got here. So we are talking about this quadratic equation that we've got here. That means that our value of a is 1, because it's the number that goes in front of the x squared. b is 5, and c is minus 6. So we get that x is equal to minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times c, which is minus 6, all divided by 2a, which is 2. So x is equal to minus 5 plus or minus the square root of. So we've got 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 6, and that's 49, all divided by 2. Now, because we've got that plus or minus, we're going to get two solutions. So one of the solutions is x is equal to minus 5 plus 7 over 2, or x is equal to minus 5 minus 7 over 2. So either x is equal to 1 or x is equal to minus 6, which are the same two solutions that we've got over here. So the third way, we're not actually going to go into how we do the third way, but the third way is by using a technique um, called completing the square. And that's something that we're going to have a look at later on, so I don't think we'll talk about that one. Now, I'm going to put this last one here in brackets, the fourth technique. The fourth technique that you can actually use is you can use your calculator solver. There is something in your calculator called a polynomial solver. Um, I have a graphics calculator, so it may be a bit different to the class quiz, but you should find out from your teacher or have a look online how you can use your calculator to solve quadratics. Because if you can, and it doesn't ask you to solve um, using algebra, this is going to be something that's really useful and for checking your answers. 
So we're going to have a look now at thinking about other ways that you can solve quadratic equations. So we've said that there is factorising the quadratic formula, completing the square, and sort of, you can use the calculator. But we don't always need to do factorising. So it says here, solving without factorising. This is really important, and people often forget this. If the subject only appears once, when I'm talking about the subject, in this case I'm talking about the thing I'm trying to solve for in the equation, it might be easier not to expand out and then factorise. So some people, when they look at this equation, their instinct is to square this bracket to get x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 5, and then to subtract 5 so they get x squared minus 2x minus, uh, minus 4 equals 0, and then to factorise from there or to try and solve the equation from that way. But I don't recommend doing this because we only have x appearing once. What we should do instead in this situation is this. Instead of squaring, both sides have been squared here, I'm going to do the inverse of this squaring and I'm going to square root both sides. So if I square root the left hand side, I just get x minus 1. And if I square root the right hand side, I get the square root of 5. But I would get the positive and negative roots there. So straight away, I can add 1 to both sides and I just get x is equal to 1 plus or minus root 5. So it is much easier if the subject only appears once. Do not try and do expanding and factorising. Just think about how you can do inverse operations to remove this square by square rooting both sides. So that's a little tip that I think will be helpful, helpful for you as well. And I'm just going to touch on the idea of something called what I call pseudo quadratics. Pseudo kind of means not real. So these quadratics I'm talking about here, they are types of quadratics, but they're not the traditional kind of quadratic that we usually see with a squared term, a non-squared term, and then a constant. So like I've written here, when we have an expression like, say, x squared plus 3x minus 2, we say that it is a quadratic in x. x is the thing that is, is making up this quadratic. But you can have quadratics in other variables too. So for example, although this doesn't look quite like a quadratic, it actually is a quadratic. And this time it is a quadratic in the square root of x instead. So to do this as a substitution, what you can do is you could say, let y equal the square root of x. Then what that would mean is that y squared would be x. You can see here I've just squared the left side and I squared the right side. Now using that substitution, I know here that x is equal to y squared. So I can replace it with y squared and then I know that root x is y, so that's going to be minus 6y, and that is plus 8 equals 0. And then I'm going to think to myself, can I factorise this? Yes, I can. So that's y minus 2, y minus 4 equals 0. So either y is equal to 2 or y is equal to 4. But remember, we're trying to find out what x is. So we go back to this line that we've got here. And we're going to find out what x is because y is the square root of x. So the square root of x is 2. So x is equal to 2 squared, which is 4. The square root of x is 4. So x is equal to 4 squared, which is 16. So the solutions to this are 4 and 16. Now, the second way I've said this is like a hardcore method of people who would just be able to look at this and see that it is actually a type of quadratic and to be able to factorise it straight away. And what these people might recognise is you could say, well, it looks like I'm going to have root x minus 2 and root x minus 4. And when I expand that, I would indeed come up with this quadratic that I've got written here. So straight away, this would tell me that either root x is equal to 2 so x is 4, or root x is equal to 4, so x is equal to 16. And we come up with these two solutions that we've got here. I suppose the other thing that I could do, I'm going to do like a, a calculator as my final one that I've got. In my calculator, I could say that a is 1, b is minus 6, and c is 8. And it would just give me the solutions, so I could go straight away and say, well, the square root of x, the calculator would give me 2. So that must mean x is 4. 
Or I could say that the square root of x is 4 from the calculator, so x is equal to 16. So you can use all three of these methods. I wouldn't recommend using the calculator method in this topic, but later on when it's just sort of a part of a question, it would be okay to do. So we're going to do a few equations now, we're going to decide which is the best way of solving these, and then we're going to do a little bit more work on pseudo quadratics in a separate video. So this first one that I've got here, I've actually got x appearing twice. So it looks like the only way I'm going to be able to solve this one is actually by expanding and factorising because it appears twice. So I'm going to first of all expand, then I'm going to put everything all onto one side so that it equals zero, and then I'm going to solve in either factorising. Oh, it does say factorisation. So then I will factorise. OK, so we have x plus 3 squared equals x plus 5. I'm going to expand this left hand side here. Now you can either, if you need to expand this, you can write out x plus 3, x plus 3. But I know when I expand this, I'm going to get an x squared at the beginning. I know I'm going to get a plus 9 at the end from this bit here. And I know that the other terms are going to be an x times 3, which is a 3x, and an x times 3, which is a 3x. So there's going to be two of those, which is a 6x. So that's x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to x plus 5. So I've done that first bit. I'm now going to move everything onto one side to make it equal 0. So that is x squared plus 5x. I've subtracted x plus 4 equals 0. And now I'm going to factorise for the last step. So it looks like it's going to be an x plus 1 and an x plus 4, making it equal 0. So this gives me my solutions that x is equal to minus 1 or x is equal to negative 4. So we've got those two solutions that we're always looking for. OK, the second equation that we have here, I'm hoping when you look at this equation, you will notice that x only appears once. So I do not want to do any expanding. Expanding is going to be a waste of time and a waste of energy. I'm going to just directly start solving this equation. So I have 2x plus 1 squared is equal to 5. So the first thing I'm going to do to both sides is I'm going to square root. Now, if I square root this, I will just end up with 2x plus 1. And if I square root this side, I will get plus or minus root 5. Now I'm just going to solve the equation like normal. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So that's going to be negative 1 plus or minus root 5. You could have written plus or minus root 5, negative 1. We just tend to write it in this way that we've got here. Okay. And then my next step is going to be dividing by 2. So it's either going to be negative 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2. Or the other way that you might see this is negative 1 over 2, just dividing the first part by 2, plus or minus root 5 over 2. You may see it written as two separate fractions. Alternatively, you might write your solutions as x equals minus 1 plus root 5 over 2. And the other solution is that x is equal to minus 1 minus root 5 over 2. So that you're definitely showing that you've got those two solutions that we've got to that equation. OK, so the third one that I've got here looks a little bit different. It doesn't really look like a quadratic, but we've got this first step where I've got a square root symbol on this side. And I don't really know how to deal with those just yet. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to square both sides. And by squaring both sides, what I will do is get rid of that square root sign. So when I square root this, I will get x plus 3. Not square root, when I square that, I will get x plus 3. Now, the mistake people make when trying to square this is they just write down, oh, it's just going to be x squared plus 9 because they've just squared each term individually. But you're actually squaring the whole expression there. So you need to make sure that you write x minus 3 all squared like this. You're squaring the entire thing and not each thing individually. Now, this is going to be like the first question that we did. So I'm going to expand, make equal 0 and then try and solve maybe using factorising. So that's going to be x plus 3 equals, there's going to be an x squared, there's going to be a 9, and there's going to be a minus 3x twice, so there's going to be a minus 6x. And I'm going to make everything all on one side, so it's going to be x squared minus 7x, and that's going to be plus 6. Looks like I can factorise, so that's going to be an x minus 1 and an x minus 6. So we then get that either x is equal to 1 or x is equal to 6. So we better have a look and see something here, because I've written something at the top. When you square both sides of an equation, you can generate false solutions, because um, square, squaring and square rooting, um, it can just introduce extra things because of the property of square rooting, having negatives and uh, plus or minuses. 
Now, when you look at this side, this is the positive square root. It doesn't have a plus or minus at the front. So we're just talking about the positive square root that we've got here. So let's actually just try and substitute in to see if both of these work. So if x is equal to 1, the left hand side would be equal to the square root of 1 plus 3, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. And the right hand side would be 1 minus 3, which is minus 2. Ah, so the left hand side does not equal the right hand side. So this means that x equals 1 is not a solution. So this came up because it's when you if this left hand side were negative, when we squared it to get this, it would have just become the positive version, which is why we needed to check to see if this would work. We're just going to check the other one. So if x is equal to 6, the left hand side would be equal to the square root, and we're always talking about the original equation, of 6 plus 3, which is the square root of 9, or 3. And the right hand side would be equal to 6 minus 3, which is 3. So this is true because the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. The equation has been solved. So the only solution to this equation is x equals 6. So I'm going to do a little bit more on pseudo quadratics in a second. But why don't we just do one more practice here? This time I'm going to let y equal the square root of x, which means that y squared is equal to x. So I'm going to do the substitution now. That means I'm going to have 2y squared plus y minus 1 equals 0. Now, when it's got equal, uh, when it's a minus 1 at the end, it should be quite easy to factorise because we've only got a couple of choices. So I know one of the bits will be a 2y, and I know the other bit will be a y here. And I think if I put the plus 1 here and the minus 1 here, I think that should give me the correct factorising that we've got. Let's just see if that will work. Yeah, I'd get 2y squared plus 2y minus y minus 1. That's great. So this tells me that either 2y minus 1 equals a half, uh, is equal to 0, in other words, y is equal to a half, or y plus 1 is equal to 0, so y is equal to minus 1. Now, remember, we need to actually finish this equation off because we know that y is equal to the square root of x. So the square root of x is a half. And so x is equal to a half squared, which is a quarter. And then for this one we've got here, we know that y is minus 1. So the square root of x is minus 1. And so then we're going to square both sides. So we get x is equal to 1. Now, we should just double check to see if this works, because we've said that the square root of the number is a negative number. Let's check this second solution that we've got here. So we would have 2x, so the left-hand side would be 2 times 1 plus the square root of 1 minus 1. So that would be 2 plus 1 minus 1, which is 2. And that doesn't equal the right hand side, which is zero. So this is not going to work. This is not a solution. And hopefully you can spot the reason that this one doesn't work is because the square root of the number is negative. And we don't normally have that with the square root of the number being negative. We normally would take it as the positive square root that we've got here. When you take the square root of x here, we wouldn't know that it's only the negative one that would be working. So we don't actually have this one as a solution. The only one that works is the quarter. And you can try that one out when you do the substitution yourself. OK, we're going to have a look at a little bit more of these pseudo quadratic equations in just a second.